further ado, let's uh, please welcome back the West Pier Middle School Fanta Bila Acapella Groups. Have at it, gang. Enjoy.
Well, I think they sounded better after the pizza. What do you think? Thank you so much for sharing part of your time with us tonight. Appreciate that. I'll tell you what they say. One of the scariest things you can do in your life is to give a speech. And I tell scary would be to sing a song in front of people. You know what I'm saying? We'll go bad in the back of you up or cover up for your mistake. They did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, it's great stuff. All right. Oh, look at that old thing, care of again. Thank you again to that group. Now we are honored to have the Piers Mayor with us tonight to help celebrate the work of our police and fire departments. Please welcome now Mayor James Boyd to the podium to reflect on the importance of this wonderful day. Mayor, good to see you again. This is working, thank you. Okay, I'll hold it. Thanks, Bill. We tried to get a stand. I'm not a big stand guy. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> By the way, um, Bill has stepped in for this event uh, kind of last minute, so how about a big hand for Bill Jarts for stepping in, <laughs> devoting his time as usual. I always have to follow. We're together a lot now, aren't we, Bill? So you're pretty much working for the city, the best I can tell right now. I do want to give a shout out to a very special guest. Um, it, it seems that we have a young man um, who's very fascinated with the position of mayor. Not me as much, but position of mayor. His name is Owen Gosen, and Owen Gosen sent me a really cool letter um, um, that I won't share with you right now, the letter itself, um, but it seems that Owen Gosen um, watches Paw Patrol. And if you know Paw Patrol, there are two mayors. There's a female mayor and a, a male mayor. So I guess I'm the mayor, the, the male mayor, who is Mayor Humdinger. Um, and I, I, I think, if I understand the show correctly, he's not the most respected of the mayors. Um, but he's still fascinated by the position. So for that, I respect Owen to no end. Um, so Owen, thank you very much. And I want you to know, Owen, I tried to search for a purple suit. I couldn't find one. So this, just pretend this is purple. So thank you, Owen. I appreciate it. I've been asked to offer some insight on the importance of this event. And I really think that if you look at this crowd, the people who came out to support these public safety servants and their contributions to the betterment of residents, not just from De Pere, but the surrounding municipalities, I think you really get the significance of this event. These people, led by the incredible service clubs that put this event together, and again, how about a big hand for the service clubs all getting together to put this thing together? It started, I think, eight years ago. Anytime I reach out to the service clubs and I ask them for something, without fail, they always step up. So I'm, I'm deeply grateful, and, and this is an incredible event. Collectively, want to show their appreciation to the honorees. I think it's also cool, and I'm going to kind of move ahead here a little bit. The real star of the event will be here later on. The, 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 um, the, um, the, the, the person's name, not a person, the dog's name is Canine Kurt. Canine Kurt will be here in just a bit. Canine Kurt will steal the show. So he, you know, it's a non-human that will receive an award. So I'm bracing you for what will be a fascinating uh, performance, or at least a display, by Canine Kurt. So he'll be here in just a bit. So wait for that. You are going to hear stories of the exceptional team effort of deep air police officers working hard to stem the flow of illegal drugs in the area. You are also going to hear of incredible bravery and a noble act of selflessness by two of our fire personnel. But we should also remember that this is what our finest do day in and day out. They don't do their jobs for recognition or awards, so it is our job to do that for them. You should be proud of your accomplishments and the recognition and honors that come with it. On behalf of the residents of De Pere, myself, and the Common Council, congratulations to the Beyond the Call and Outstanding Firefighter honorees tonight. You have earned the recognition, and I hope you enjoy this special evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. All the great things you do for this wonderful community. Now, the uh, journey to honor members of the De Pere Public Safety started months and months ago. To share the story how this program was put together and the efforts of the Civic Clubs who make it possible, please welcome right now Mr. Lee Myers from the De Pere Men's Club. Right here, Lee. The show is all yours, my friend.
I, I have a, about a half hour here, but uh, <laughs> I just want to again uh, thank the students from West Superior uh, Middle School. I just am amazed every time I hear the students from either school or all the schools uh, perform. Just give them a hand again. I think they're still here. I, I think that's the highlight, highlight of this whole thing. But uh, again, as our song mentioned, the unsung heroes, and that's why we're here, to honor the unsung heroes. I guess this is kind of a passion of mine, but I know these guys, <clears throat> I hate to say put their life on the line, but they actually do nowadays, especially with some of the things that are going on. But, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, this started like eight years ago, and I don't know, I started with one group, I think a fire department guy, the chief then, mentioned this would be a good thing to do. And so then thought about it, we well, just can't have the fire department, we've got to have the police department too. We've got to have all the first responders. And then it was one club and then two clubs. And then we said, well, let's, this is a citywide event. These guys work for the city. Let's try and get all the clubs we can. And I think there were 10 clubs at one time. So a real good cross-section of the community. And I want to thank all those that have participated on the committee. I, I want to mention names, so let's bear with me. And Terry Hasselbacker, again, was mentioned probably three times already, but just passed away. He was an integral part of this committee, and I uh, uh, wish he was still here. But Alice Kolb has kind of filled in with Kiwanis Club. Alice, thank you, our treasurer. Sue Sands from the Women's Club. Tom Franken is new, uh, and, and Greg DeClean has been on the Rotary, from the Rotary Club. Pete Mickelson from the Optimist Club. Pat Lennon from the Knights of Columbus. Dave and Dan Vandehei from the men's, from the uh, Pink Flamingos. I can't forget the Pink Flamingos. Um, Pat Warren and uh, Randy Han Hansen from the uh, VFW Post. Linda Moran from the VFW Auxiliary. Mike Fleck from the Lions Club. And that's about it. And if, I, if there's any other clubs in De Pere, let me know. <laughs> we'll try and get them involved. Um, and I guess I've mentioned too that uh, uh, we missed two years because of COVID. We've been doing this every year for eight years. And the uh, bigger plaques over there are the group plaques that we started back in 15 over by the wall. And the, the honorees are mentioned there every year for, since 19, uh, 2015. But we missed two years because of COVID. And these guys were putting their life, we were all hunkered down at home. These guys were putting their life on the line, literally having to deal with this COVID, which was an unknown disease for a year there we didn't know until we had the vaccine that you know so uh, again we wanted to honor them and that's why we invited all the police and firefighters to uh, tonight to provide a dinner so I'd like to have them all stand please all first responders and let's give them a big round of applause They're, they're the guys that make the pier the place to live. If I, I had chances to live in other places, then I'm not moving away. I'm staying in the pier because of these guys and the school system. But anyway, so that's about all I have. So thank you all for, for coming. Thank you again. We appreciate that. Be careful coming down. 74 tomorrow? 74 tomorrow? Oh, you know what that means. Everybody together for Lee here now. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lee. Happy birthday to you. Drinks are on Lee at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Lee. Shame on me for dancing. No, Lee, thank you. Uh, congratulations on that, my friend. Thanks for all you do in putting this thing together. And the history of this thing is amazing. I'm glad we get to get that COVID thing in the rear view here and out of these most deserving people. So uh, now for the folks of today's ceremony, just please feel free to follow along in the insert of the program. And uh, you make sure I don't miss anything. If you do, just uh, throw something at me, right? Lee, you're going to do that. But uh, the word of recommend, uh, recommendation was received by Sergeant Jake Nowak and Matt Magno. In the past few years, dangerous illicit drugs from outside the area have been coming into our section of Wisconsin. Unfortunately, many of the drugs have become more potent, and in too many cases, they prove lethal. 
The peer is not immune to the hazards of illegal narcotics, and we have felt the effects of it, of course. In the midst of this, a small group of officers have rededicated themselves to the interdiction of illegal drugs flowing into our area. The word team comes to mind when describing the group of officers because of the exceptional team effort they have demonstrated over the past 12 months when conducting drug enforcement within the city of De Pere and also in Brown County. These officers have taken it upon themselves and worked together better than any group of patrol officers in the De Pere Police Department's history to combat the large quantities of illegal drugs, drug money, and drug traffickers entering and damaging our community. Each officer in this team is a specific skill set which they've used to contribute to the overall success of this team of officers. The efforts of these officers in 2022 led to more than more significant drug arrests and forfeiture seizures than in any other year this agency has ever seen. It's become it's because rather of their endless efforts in combating the movement of illegal drugs in our community that they've been selected to receive the 2022 Beyond the Coal Award. The officers making up the team are K-9 Officer Benjamin Giese, K-9 Kurt, before I mentioned K-9 Kurt, who will be here shortly. No, is he here yet? Who's here yet? He's coming. Officer Tyler Dawson, Officer Walter Pappas, Pappas rather, excuse me, Officer Jacob Eberhardt, Officer Brian Rates, and Officer Aaron Alberts. Two sergeants on the shift, Sergeant Matthew Magno and Sergeant Jacob Nowak, nominated the officers on the shift for the Beyond the Call Award, but did not mention their own efforts. Accordingly, they will also be recognized for their contributions to these efforts in May at an upcoming City Council meeting. So we begin. K-9 Officer Benjamin Giese has been in law enforcement since 2008, holding positions as a patrol officer, SWAT operator, police explorer advisor, EWOC instructor, field training officer, honor guard, and K-9 handler. He's a graduate of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, where he double majored in environmental studies and geographic informational systems. In his free time, he enjoys spending time with his wife, Christina, their two children, Kendall and Kelsey, hunting, fishing, and training his black labs for waterfowl hunting. Canine Kurt, the star of the show. A dual purpose police service dog for the Deer Police Department, Canine Kurt was born in Raiden, Germany on April 27th of 2015. Germany is where Canine Kurt started his initial police service dog training. In September of 2016, K-9 Kurt traveled to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he met his new handler and started the final stages of his police server dog training with K-9 Services. There, he and his handler spent eight weeks honing their skills in narcotics detection, personal tracking, and suspect apprehension. After rigorous testing and training, K-9 Kurt was ready to hit the streets of the pier in November of 2016 to help keep drugs off the streets and the citizens as well as the officers safe in our community. When K-9 Kurt was not working, he enjoys playing fetch and sleeping at his handler's home. <laughs> How about that? What a life, huh? Officer Tyler Dawson. Officer Tyler Dawson has been in law enforcement since 2016, holding positions as a patrol officer and field training officer. He's a graduate of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, where he graduated with his Bachelor's of Science degree in criminal justice. He moved to De Pere in 2002, graduated from De Pere High School, enjoyed traveling with his wife, hunting and watching Indiana Hoosier basketball. Now we can forgive him for that. <laughs> Next up, Officer Walter Pappas began his law enforcement career in 2013 with the Menominee County Sheriff's Department before joining the De Pere Police Department in 2017. Officer Pappas currently serves the department as a patrol officer, use of force instructor, SWAT officer, drug recognition expert, and field training officer. Before beginning his career in law enforcement, Officer Pappas served in the U.S. Army as an infantryman and civil affairs specialist. He's a graduate of Fox Valley Technical College. Officer Pappas enjoys shooting sports and spending time with his wife, Sarah, and their two kids, Dalton and Mackenzie. Up next, Officer Jacob Eberhardt. Officer Jacob Eberhardt has been in the law enforcement business since 2016 and holds the position of patrol officer. He received a life-saving award during 2019 during his time with the Fear Police Department. He's a graduate of Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, enjoys spending time hunting, fishing, and traveling with his wife, Ashley, and daughter, Emma. Jacob and Ashley are also expecting a new addition to the family in the fall of 2023. Congratulations. How about that? Wonderful. Up <laughs> uh, next, Officer Brian Rates. Officer Brian Rates has been in law enforcement for over a decade now, with the last three and a half years with the city of De Pere. Prior to coming to De Pere, Brian was an investigator for general crime with an emphasis on narcotics. He's active in several drug and gang task forces. Brian's a certified firearms instructor, 
standardized field sobriety instructor, advanced roadside impaired driving enforcement instructor, field training officer, and drug recognition expert. He credits his desire to go into law enforcement to his father and gives credit to his mother who always put up with him. <laughs> He's also grateful for his son's mother, Kim. When Brian is not at work, he enjoys watching his son blaze his athletic events, or the two of them uh, can be found fishing or out in the woods exploring nature. Up next, Officer Aaron Alberts, been in public safety now, ranging from being a firefighter, dispatcher, correctional officer, now patrol officer for the last four years. He went to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, graduated in 2010 with an associate's degree in law enforcement. Aaron enjoys spending time staying active by working out, renovating his home with various projects, and spending time with his family. He's also married to his wife, Amanda, with whom he has four children, Chloe, Jack, Henry, and baby Amelia, due in late April. Again, congratulations. At this time, I'd like to invite Sergeants Jake Nowak and Matt Magno to come forward to the podium to say a few words on behalf of our award recipients tonight. Gentlemen. Fortunately, Jake isn't going to be here. He had something come up, so I got tasked with this. Um, Sergeant Matt Magno with the De Pere Police Department. Well, uh, I work alongside and supervise uh, the officers that are honored here tonight. I'd like to take this time, just take a minute to uh, thank all the multiple civic units or uh, civic groups for putting this event on. You guys don't understand how much it means to us to have that support, that generosity. Um, and it doesn't go unseen, especially by myself, other officers, and both the police department and the fire department as a whole. Also, I'd like to thank all the family, friends, um, members of the community who showed up here today. I fully understand that the support goes well beyond than just tonight, but seeing everybody here today uh, to allow and see what these guys are doing, uh, it's great support um, that we don't often see. Uh, this year, I'm honored and proud to announce the recipients of Beyond the Call Award goes to their 2022 night shift crew. Uh, when Jake and I received the announcement that we had to nominate one person, uh, we couldn't do it. Uh, we were unable to single out just one person out of the group that we were dealing with. Uh, they're just that special. Uh, for that reason, we decided to nominate the entire group as a whole. Uh, this group is made up of uh, multiple different officers and they've had a huge impact on the community, uh, developing a very strong bond amongst themselves and they work very well with each other. This bond allows them to work tirelessly to ensure the safety of the community that they serve. Their drive and determination has led to multiple drug arrests as you've heard. I believe uh, the money seizures that they've had was records for our department and yet they still provide and try to reduce the amount of crime that comes within the community. Their efforts are making a significant impact in a positive way to the community. I'm often impressed with the professionalism and tenacity with their work ethic and drive towards a common goal. I have learned so much from these officers that cannot express my gratitude to be part of their team. These officers um, never lost sight or forgot about the reason why they have become an officer. Being an officer can often have many definitions, but they have never lost the most important one. Being the one to be called upon to ward off evil, having the compassion and devotion to the community they serve and strive to keep them safe. For those reasons, I'm proud to recognize the officers that you guys will meet later on tonight. I won't go through all of them. I know there's two that aren't here. Uh, Officer Tyler Dawson and Brian Rates, they unfortunately had other events that are going on. Out of that whole group, I have utmost respect for these officers and continue uh, and their continual effort to ensure the safety of the citizens of De Pere, along with the other uh, people within the department. As a member of the community, it should give you great confidence to know that these officers are working to ensure the safety so that you guys can see, sleep safe at night. The De Pere Police Department is committed to the city of De Pere, and these officers have set the bar extremely high that now we all have to achieve it. 
Uh, thank you for your continual support from other members, from everybody here, family, friends. Um, and it's, I'm very happy that they are being recognized for their effort throughout the year and they're receiving their Beyond the Call Award tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergeant. Appreciate that. A little commotion out there. Once again, I'd like to call on the uh, birthday, soon-to-be birthday boy to come up here along with our uh, chief tonight, Jeremy Morosky, to... Uh, to the point to assist me in bestowing these wonderful awards. So if you would please, gentlemen, come on up and say hello. Looking pretty good for a 73-year-old guy, isn't he? I mean, look at him. How many of those? I work out. <laughs> so do I. It doesn't do any good, but anyway. Each of me those, those little uh, the cream puffs or whatever they were, right? All right. Ready? Let's do it. At this point, I'd like to ask uh, K-9 Officer Benjamin Giese, K-9 Kurt, Officer Walter Pappas, Officer Jacob Everard, and Officer Al Aaron Alberts to make their way to the podium to receive the DePere Police Department's Beyond the Call Award. Unfortunately, as we mentioned before, Officers Dawson and Rates had other commitments this evening and can't be with us tonight. So come on up and see us. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the award winner. What do you think? You need some cream puffs up here if you don't mind. Take the honors. Go ahead
also provide money to, for the officers to do, donate to the charity of their cause. And so this group uh, picked the Bark and Blue to donate their money to. Obviously another dog thing. But, uh, so is there somebody here to accept that? Or bark and Blue? You want to say anything to I think the batteries get low, but we got plenty of juice. Okay, I got this. I should just give the microphone to the dog and just let him say everything that we have to say. Thank you and congratulations to all of you, and thank you so much for serving our communities and for thinking of our organization this evening. We appreciate that. For those of you who don't know who the Bark and Blue Foundation is, at the heart of what the Bark and Blue Foundation does is our desire is to bring Kurt and his handler home as safely as we can at the end of the night. So a lot of times, any of you animal owners, any of you have vet bills, any of you go through tub toys, any of you go through collars, all of that fun stuff, there's just certain things that are um, not known factors, and we are so proud to be able, as a 501c3, to support Kurt and his handler in these units to make sure that all is well and good for them at the end of the day. And again, congratulations to all of you. distinguish themselves as we move on to, in our program. The word recommendation was received from Commander Brian Murphy from the Ashwaubenon Public Safety Department. The recommendation recognized Battalion Chief Ron, Ron Cody and Firefighter Brandon Hageman for their heroic efforts. This is an incredible story. Commander Murphy, could you please identify yourself to the crowd by standing or waving a little bit to make sure we, there he is right there. Thank you. And what a story this is. Here we go. On December 31st, 2020, so it's New Year's Eve now, 2021, the Pier Fire Rescue, as part of the Fox River Fire District, responded to the village of Ashwabana for a report of a working structure fire in its two-story apartment building located at 2182 Carstensen Lane. The fire engulfed an apartment on the second floor and was rapidly spreading smoke through the entire structure. It was reported that people were trapped on the second floor and unable to exit the building. Battalion Chief Rod, Rod Cody and Firefighter Brandon Hageman were tasked with the job of rescuing those occupants. As flames and conditions worsened, these firefighters didn't hesitate one bit to act. They quickly sprang into action, went above and beyond the call of duty to assist people out of the second floor of that building. The team worked to safely rescue two occupants with physical limitations. They assisted the victims out a window and down a ladder to safety. Their quick thinking, bravery, and selflessness in the face of danger contributed to saving the lives of those trapped inside. Their actions serve as a testament to the courage and dedication of our firefighters who put themselves in harm's way to protect our communities. It is because of firefighters like these two individuals that we can all sleep a little easier at night knowing they're ready to respond to any emergency and deal with human lives. The award recommendations were received for the same two team members from two different citizens who experienced different events in our community. Recommendations recognize these team members for their compassion, care, and sincerity. Battalion Chief Ron Cody began his career with the LOA Fire Department as a paid on-call firefighter in 1991. He was hired by the De Pere Fighter Rescue as a paid on-call firefighter in 1994 and hired full-time in 1995. Ron graduated from NWTC as a paramedic in 1994. He continues his education at WWGB in the sciences and humanities fields. 
In 2000, he became employed with the Brown County Medical Examiner's Office, the deputy medical examiner. Ralph Run, that is, pursued a degree from St. Louis University of Medicine, becoming a board-certified medical examiner in 2007. In 2020, he became a member of the Northeast Emergency Debrief, NEED is now a team, as an advocate for mental health. In 2021, he was promoted to lieutenant and promoted to battalion chief in 2022. Ron loves serving his community. I think you said everybody here wears the, wear the uniform. They love serving their community. He loves the outdoors and live music. He has a beautiful daughter, a great uh, son-in-law, and two beautiful granddaughters. Congrats there. Our next firefighter, Brandon Hageman, United States Navy veteran, serving as an aircraft mechanic for four years with two deployments overseas. He was hired as a part-time firefighter EMT with the De Pere Fire and Rescue of May of 2021, where he also served as the interim training officer. Been a firefighter EMT for 17 years now, holding positions as an intern, and I just lost my microphone. <laughs> can someone on the crew, can somebody bring a battery up here, please? I don't know, there's a backup in here. I'll talk loud. <laughs> if we could get another battery, it'd be great. Thank you. Uh, we'll pick up. Uh, been a firefighter EMT for 17 years, including holding positions as an intern, unpaid call member, and a career firefighter with various organizations in Wisconsin as well as Minnesota. In his current roles, he's a battalion chief of the Stevens Point Fire Department and a fire instructor at Mid-State Technical College during the uh, central part of the state. He's been married to his beautiful and supportive wife, Amber, for 11 years, has three children, Owen, Everett, and Lincoln. Next, Lee, birthday boy, get up here along with Fire Chief Al Matsky to step up here and assist me in bestowing these awards, and hopefully we'll get a microphone back before we... Uh, Go too much farther on that front. There we go, we're back in business. Right. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, I saw that red light go, I thought we'd make it. But it's no one. All right, next, Lee Meyer, we have, and uh, Fire Chief Al Matsky up here as well. And now, uh, if we could ask uh, Battalion Chief Ron Cody and Firefighter Brandon Hagman to make their way to the podium to receive their outstanding Firefighter Awards tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Battalion Chief Ron Cody and Firefighter Brandon Hagman. Thank you all for sharing your time and this evening with us. Thank you to the civic groups of De Pere for this beautiful event, dinner, and the recognition. It is greatly appreciated, uh, more than words can say. Thank you to Commander Brian Murphy from Ashwaubenon Public Safety for nominating Brandon and I. Um, that was really, uh, it was a surprise and I'm, I'm very grateful, thank you. Thank you to our chiefs for getting us and keeping us trained with the best equipment to use and be as successful as possible. This is what helped makes us be a very, very, very effective group. We all really need to thank Ms. Leah Taylor for all of her many, many hours um, to make the program work and flow because without her, this is truly not possible. Thank you so much, Leah. I see in the crowd my co-workers, my friends, my family that are here to support us, and I see city officials and many business leaders. Standing here receiving this award is very humbling, and I am truly honored. There are many firefighters that are just as deserving all day, every day. We are part of a working group under the Mabus system and Fox River Fire District that allows us to respond and have responses to local communities, which is why we were in Ishwabnan for this very fire call. We all help each other out, and that is truly the formula for success. Brandon and I performed the rescues of the trapped residents, and we are blessed that the outcome was successful. We do this not out of 
recognition, but out of love for our fellow human beings and the desire to want to help those that are in need. So again, thank you to everyone for the support, kindness, and warmth. I am beyond honored. In closing, I want to thank my daughter for her continuous love, support, and understanding. I have missed functions due to my work schedule and training sometimes, and she always just says, well then, we'll do it tomorrow. And we do. My guess is, is that uh, my awesome, beautiful grandbabies love two parties also, just as much as me. And after all, who doesn't love uh, more pizza and cake and ice cream? So with that in closing again, thank you everybody for this awesome recognition. Thank you. Along with Battalion G. Ron, the Cody and Firefighter Brandon Hagman Award, the Civic Clubs of De Pere will be making a donation in their name to a local organization, canine, uh, a canine for our crew. Now we have someone here, Tammy uh, Ghost. Tammy, Tammy, where are you tonight? Tammy. You give it, you give it away. Great. Come see. Oh, you get your hands full. <laughs> Why don't we come over there? You go, we get someone to hand off just a minute? Thank you. Mom will be back. Don't worry. Sure. Please, you would share a little, a little bit about this particular uh, donation, what your organization does. Um, our goal of the canine for our crew um, is we begin this fundraiser with the goal of acquiring an adequate amount of um, purchasing a therapy dog um, for training and support for the DePierre Fire Department as a way to say thank you not only to them for assisting with a very unexpected and quick at-home birth of our daughter um, in the early morning hours of December 24, 2021, but also as a way to bring the entire De Pere community together to show our appreciation to the crew. We are forever grateful to the De Pere, De Pere, De Pere Fire Department, De Pere Police Officers and Dispatchers who helped to provide support to us and ensure a healthy delivery of our now one-year-old beautiful baby daughter. A therapy dog would help to aid in the support of the crew's mental health as they continue to bring aid and support to our community as well in emergency situations. Together with local small businesses, extracurricular organizations, nursing homes, and support from the entire DePure community, this fundraiser has exceeded our initial expectations and our efforts remain ongoing. From stories of the DePure High School cross-country team delivering coffee to the fire station, former students donating their birthday money, monetary donations from local businesses, we are extremely grateful and honored by the generosity and support that the fundraiser has received so far. We are very humbled to be chosen to accept this donation for the fundraiser and are excited to be one step closer to achieving our goal with your support. Show everybody our special delivery here. There we go. Look at there. Thank you, guys. And you're delivering lives, saving lives. This is you're just a wonderful gift to our community. Thank you both. And congratulations to you. Wonderful. Congrats. I do award winner right there, ladies and gentlemen. See that, Lee? These are donating their birthday money, so I'm just saying. <laughs> Hey, yeah, 74 years old, you probably get like a brack up a bridge truck or something, you know what I mean? Remember what a big deal that was? You opened a car from Grandma. Oh, my fuck you. Again, congratulations. Oh, yes. Finally, our two perpetual plaques that have been displayed in the police department lobby proclaiming the names of the distinguished police officers and firefighters acknowledging their work. Uh, there is room to add more names over time to honor future heroic public safety servants to make DePierre a great place to live, work, and play that it is indeed. And I've, I've been up on this podium for many times for other particular events in Green in uh, DePierre, rather. If you have to have anything bad happen to you, thank your blessing to count your blessing that you live in DePierre. I've never seen a community that sticks together so closely together as DePierre, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a great mayor, great police and fire, whatever, but there's just a feeling of bond within this community that holds you guys together that you can do great things because you all tug on the rope and say, let's get this job done. So again, to all our award winners tonight, congratulations and thank you. And to keep up the great work, what can I say? You guys, like they say, when other people run away from things you guys want to add. So thank you for making it safe 
they can put it on fire. I've had them on fire. I've also got hit by light. I know where the Valley Hall fire is. Trust me, believe me. Thank you for what you guys do. Enjoy your rest of your evening, and thank you for coming tonight. I honor these wonderful people. Good night, everybody.